Alright. We are now network. It is, it is, you know, the background information is a lot. The reason being is I didn't have uh, any prerequisites and then I want uh, you know, more, more people can uh, take the class and you know, see the material. So that's why we have very long uh, background explanation. So network, the so mo most important thing is we're going to use the uh, Wireshark and the, the one thing that you need to just remember is that the network uh, uh, packet actually encapsulated, you all remember the OSI model in the seven layer, but in reality, there's like a four, right? But you, you will see the, there is the, uh, like a header for Ethernet in general, and like a link layer header, and then you will see the IP uh, header, then TCP or UDP header, then you will see the data in the application. So th that's what it uh, means here. So TCP payload is the one that actually has all the application layer data. You can have some other, you know, application specific headers there. Right? But in all that's just a TCP payload. All right. And common uh, port list, everyone knows the HTTP usually go to the port 880, and it can be port 8080, right? And HTTPS is a 443 for DNS 53. And SMB is uh, 445. Uh, That's a uh, well used, uh, normal, uh, well, well used, commonly used uh, ports. And you can see the full list in the this INR, uh this link. All right. And ports, how many TCP ports are available? Is a uh, two to the 16 minus one. And why is that the case? Why is this gonna be? We're gonna see. The reason is be when you see the uh, TCP header, there is a two bytes. There is a, that uh, two bytes for the source port and two bytes for the destination. That's why for one port, the combination you can have is the, you know, from zero to two to the sixteen, because there's a sixteen bits, right? Uh, the available ports basically, and usually uh, port numbers there's uh, less than. Uh, 1024 is usually uh, uh, reserved for certain services. And another thing here is you will see a lot of uh, malware that is actually using port 53 or port 8080 or port 8080 is because a firewall usually most likely not going to block it because you know otherwise your employees are going to be very angry every day, right? So that they can go out and search the you know, internet or you know, look up some you know, information that necessary for their work. And uh, for slide 38, okay, here is uh, one, another small exercise. So I'm at the slide 38. And go here, I'll move to the, my home directory. And you can start Wireshark as a, I put WIR, then tap. Then you can use Mario class and miscellaneous directory, MISC, and sample.pcap, right? And I will just put ampersand at the end to run it as a background, all right? Do you see this uh, packet here, right? And if you are already familiar with uh, Wireshark, please go ahead and answer the questions. And if you are not, please uh, 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 hear, uh, listen to the uh, explanation. So let's say uh, I'm going to highlight packet number five here, right? Then you see this one packet has like a multiple headers. Like this one is, it is a, I think this one is just a frame. It's a, a TCP, uh, a TCP dump uh, specific uh, kind of just let's say header. So I, uh, rather than putting this, please uh, pay attention to from here, which is a, this is a link layer uh, header. So you have some link layer level one, 
and IP. From here, you have like source IP and destination IP, right? In the TCP, there is a source port and destination port. And when you actually expand uh, this another this windows at the bottom here, when I click at the source port, other two bytes are being highlighted, right? This means in the header, this source port uh, part is belongs to in the actual traffic binary like here. This is like a part of the TCP header. When you and click destination, that is here, right? So this is how you use your wire chart and options. Here we go, eight bytes field. Okay, another thing you can uh, use is any question? Okay, I will give you uh, sufficient uh, time to answer uh, these other uh, four questions. But uh, meanwhile, I'm going to explain just how to use the Wireshark. And in the filter, you can put uh, some filtering um, filtering statements here. For example, I want to see TCP dot ports, which is only 80. Right? Then enter. Then you you. Are going to see only port 80 here, right? If you put it like TCP dot port 80, that means it can be source port or destination port. Okay, or if you put TCP dot uh, SRC port, then you are looking at the uh, packets whose source port is 80. Right? And you can click around here, it's different packets. So this is a one, one of those useful ones, TCP dot port equal 80. This is one thing. And also, um, how about port 135? Okay, it's not there. 176. Nine, okay, so why I'm putting the 139, this is from port 135 to 139, that is used for NetBIOS, for the Windows uh, network share, because SMB port, uh, NetBIOS is called as what NetBIOS uh, port. So TCP, UDP ports from 135 to 139. So, and one of the example you are looking at, actually, you, you want to look at this TCP port 139. Then you're going to see much less packets there. This way, you can filter out the unnecessary uh, packets. Right. And I can just go in the filter, then you can say clear. Then you're going to go back to entire packets. And I will give you um, how about five minutes. Let's look around these packets and then let's see whether you can answer the questions. Okay, another actually useful tool you can use there is um, analyze the menu. You can click follow TCP stream. So let's say you click one of these packets, like a, for example, for this one, packet eight. And when you go analyze and follow TCP stream, then you will going to show uh, all uh, packets that belongs to this uh, TCP session. Then let's go to uh, the uh, answers. It says, uh, the, what's the DNS services IP address? Anyone? <coughs> One night two, okay. So it sounds. Do I have an answer? Okay, don't. Okay, so yes, let's go. Right, this one. When when we go, is a DNS packet, right? And this is a source. When you see the source, there's a string number, 
if we will port <laughs> and it goes to the uh, DNS server 53 and the DNS server's IP is 192.168.187.2 right and the next question what's the IP domain name you are L of the website visited. Anybody? No? You got it? Yeah. Okay. Um, I've got the IP is 107.6.106.82. The domain name is xkcd.com and the URL is http xkcd.com slash 1111. Oh, correct. Okay, cool. So look at, you can look at here from here what you're going to be, okay, what is being asked is you go uh, to click uh, this question, then you will see where's the queries, right? The queries is xkcd.com, right? Then as an answer, a DNS server will answer, okay, here was uh, your question, xkcd.com. I'm uh, clicking the packet four and looking at the, the windows in the middle. Then you will see this DNS actually uh, application layer, uh, application layer uh, data. And it says, okay, you asked me the uh, skcd.com. Here's the answer. And the answer, uh, answer is the 107.6.106.82. Uh, uh, Did I say point? Okay. 107.6.106.82. Alright, so after that, once the client got the IP, then it actually goes to the IP, right? And let's see the uh, in the packet, right? Here, actually, when you, uh, it is just actually the same packet. So once we go here, at the uh, packet number 8, then we see better from here, okay, there is a, a TCP handshake here, right? Right after DNS, it sends sin, sin, act, act. So this is a TCP handshake, right? After that, when you see here at the packet 8, then it says, okay, at the URL, I'm going to go skcd.com and 111, right? <coughs> then after that, you will see uh, actually some uh, images being downloaded afterward, like after this page being downloaded. There was a question, uh, second question, and the third question, what's the file name a user copy to his or her network share and what kind of file is it? So, foo.txt. Um, I'm not sure what kind of file it is. If, if I found the right part, there's a, a packet where Transfers the data. It doesn't look like a text file. So. That's right. Is it, do you see the what kind of maybe yes? Um, no. Okay. Let's see that one. All right. So yes, there is a, a who that text file, but how we can see what's actually in it? it was one thirty nine, right? So when we go scroll down here. Index. Two thirty nine. It was two thirty nine. One one of them. Oh, right. So let's see from here. Uh, of numbers. Actually, rather than here. Okay, here for that text, right? So, okay, yeah, because I was looking at the wrong port. So, actually, when data is transported, then it uses like Microsoft, uh, it's, I think it's maybe the system for data stream, maybe. So, SMB port. So, when you actually see here, then there's a data uh, transmission. So, here's, let me try to explain here. So, when you actually look at the uh, network share, it, uh, there is a Probably the one that there is uh, and the session is something to do with the uh, naming. So you just basically, if, if a network here, there is go, okay, who belongs to this in the machine and then get the uh, address 
and those initial setup is uh, happening here. And when you actually scroll down, then you actually see in the, for the data transmission itself is actually going through the port 485. And you see the like, uh, for that text, when I go to analyze and go follow TCP uh, stream, then you see some header going on, right? You see the data actually, right? It, it, it says uh, text, but inside it is actually PNG file, right? And you can see from this way, but it's kind of hard when you're actually looking at this one because there's too much of data, right? Spotting through those uh, small number of uh, characters. So what you can do, another one you can do is when you click here and if, There's data, so right from TCP header we know. After this one is this entire again from NetBIOS SMB is a TCP payload. From here we can actually walk through what's in the data, right? So probably NetBIOS header SMB header, right? Here is a another kind of header. So when you go here, let's see if I'm not sure whether this one actually has a data packet. So actually this one doesn't because this is the end of the uh, payload, right? So let's inspect some further down here. Okay, there is actually a request response, which we're gonna do the okay, this is still that actually doesn't have actual data. Response. Okay, all right, actually, yeah, this is a one good indicator. You see a lot of uh, just TCP segments this is ascending to the uh, 161, uh, 187.166. So, you know, when there's application data, when you come down to the TCP layer, it actually becomes segmented, right? And when those all segments are delivered to the destination, they get their dis, uh, desegmented, so which means, you know, it's uh, combined into the one big chunk of data, right? So you see there is a bunch of TCP segments, and then at the end, they will want this wire chart will want to actually desegment it and then actually show you as a one big data. So here, let's see. Here, there you go. At the end, when you actually see, I sell, I selected. Uh, Packet is a number number two thirty one. Then actually you will actually see it in better way because there is a lot of desegmentation. There is a bunch of segments. It actually combined into one big data here. So I clicked as a one thirty a two thirty one. And let's see here. And I could see. When you actually looking at it, here is a uh, after TCP header, there's a NetBIOS and SMB header. At the end, there's a file data, right? Number 231. And when you actually see the file data, there is a, it says the file magic, it says from here, a PNG file, right? I, from here, I highlighted the file data, right? And on the, so, in, um, okay, I'm gonna give you a little bit of time. You can go through this uh, packet. You can highlight 231. SMB, file data, right? So, 
here, what I want to mention is for network packets, you have a lot of headers, and you see the application layer headers. So for this particular case, actually Wireshark has decoder. That's why you are actually seeing this in the parse data. For some case, you don't have it. So you actually you may you end up you are writing your own decoder, right? So, so one thing you, you may not have all this you know nice well-formed decoder when you are actually dealing with the malware traffic, especially. And there is a my case, there is like a chop shop. Have you heard chop shop? Yeah. Okay. So that's that on the project they are only made a tool specialized to decoding the malware traffic. Because right, uh, Wireshark do not have all different, you know, decoder for those different malware traffic. Okay. Any question for this one? So the, the goal of this lab is I want uh, being familiar with the Wireshark because uh, when you actually do the malware analysis, you end up uh, looking at a lot of the traffic because you want to know, you know where this you know, data, uh, where uh, this malware trying to you know, reach out, so you can track down who is the originator. So. There was a goal, but now let's go to 39. We are done for the 39 uh, is the one that about the background. Then we're going to actually move to more uh, memory analysis. All right. And 39 is that uh, check information about association between open ports and processes. So basically, if a uh, process uh, uh, okay, I'm going to just go here. Let's see the OVM. Uh, I close it. So let's start it from the click victim and make sure RC8 is being restored. Restore snapshot. I think we have done it before we close it. And start. Victim. And actually, we're going to take a break uh, in five minutes, and right after this lab. We will not have more break uh, in the afternoon. Okay, and go to system turn off. And there's a TCP view. Okay, I'm at the system turn off suite from the desktop here. And, and it has a TCP view tool. Okay, so this tool is actually good for looking at uh, if malware open a listening port on your machine, that is really uh, good to use this tool. However, if you are looking at the malware actually connecting to out uh, over a short period of time, then this tool is not that good because one, when malware opens a port outside, and if you're using this tool, you're going to just kind of blink. It's hard to uh, get those outgoing connections, but it's really good uh, to check if, if malware actually open a listening port here. And another thing here, say, okay, the question is what is in the TCP view, which uh, process is listening on port 135? Okay, local port. Listening means uh, which local port is open locally, right? Because that's a listening port. But when you see here, you don't see the port number, right? And it is uh, translate from the uh, uh, common and the common. I think I think this uh, string is exactly mapped with what INI define. INI has a name and the port. So anyway. You can use it was a view so options okay Ops, options and you see resolve addresses on click then now you see in the port number options so this select resolve addresses then now you see it so now can you answer the question about which process is listening on port 135? Right? Can you, who can, then just please raise your hand. Can you see it? All right? Okay, good. So now you see there's an SBC host. 
right? It is actually listening to the port 135, but what is the SBC host? It's a generic process. It doesn't say that much what, what's going on here, right? So in order to know more detail, let's open. Now I'm going to uh, see which actual service is listening on port 135. And when you see uh, in the middle of a slide 39, it says nest that and dash A and O B. It, it take a little bit of time. But, you know. So this is just a combination of options. You can see more detail. All right, now we see here nest that result. There we go. The second column is a local address, right? It has IP address and then port, right? For this particular question was 135, right? Who's listening there? Which service is listening? Right, right. So yeah, the remote procedure call subsystem, this one, right? Because the other two DLA is more generic for general networking, I guess, a socket or, you know, this more generic. So the answer will be the uh, RPC as a service is listening port 135. All right. And how about using the Pokemon? Okay, because I, I mentioned that a TCP view is a good tool to looking at the uh, listening uh, process, right? But if you want to check whether or not malware is actually opening a port during the runtime, the better tool for that purpose is a Pokemon. Because here, it has this, um, this one, this one, the third icon. This one is the one looking at the network activity. So you know to see the activity, you want to just uh, have this uh, button be clicked. Okay. 